Yeah, Adam, everyone knows, and Anna, who's only just stepped down from the podium. Um, so, uh, Wojtek's going to kick off, and it's about bilingual word sketches. Uh, Thank you, Michael, for the introduction. Um, well, I'm really sure that, that many of you have heard about word sketches. They are one page summary of, of a word, a word's collocational and grammatical behavior, behavior meaning that, uh, that uh, a list of collocates is uh, offered to the user and, and uh, divided according to uh, some uh, syntactic or, syntact, uh, or semantic features. It uh, looks like this, uh, which is uh, which, which means that, that tail is the, the most salient uh, object of chasing, uh, for example. And uh, they have been uh, used for quite a long time. The idea exists since uh, 1999, uh, 2012, uh, 2002 they were first used in the Macmillan English Dictionary project and since 2004 we have, uh, we have them available in the sketch engine. Uh, and they are uh, widely used for lexicography. They, uh, there, have, that there has been uh, work on evaluating uh, the word sketches, uh, and uh, they are by by now they have been available for for uh, thirty. I, I think a little bit a little bit more than thirty languages. Um, in two thousand and five, when I was still in high school. Uh, Sue Atkins asked Adam Kilgar if, if uh, he can have bilingual word sketches, please. And at the time it... Please and please. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, did, did she? Okay, so at, at the time it, it was not, not uh, really clear what, uh, what she meant by this, or what, uh, what actually uh, a user would, could, could do with, with uh, bilingual information, how, how this bilingual information should be presented in the, in the word sketches. And uh, in, the next, in the next eight years we have, uh, we have uh, worked out three uh, possible answers to uh, the question of bilingual word sketches, uh, the first one being a bilingual word sketch from parallel data, uh, shortened as BIP, bilingual word sketch for com from comparable data, shortened as BIC, and bilingual word sketch, uh, say, uh, done mainly manually, uh, shortened uh, by BIM. So the, the next talk will be uh, about, about these this three, uh, three proposals to how, uh, how to uh, present bilingual information in the, in the word sketch. Uh, so let's start with BIP, bilingual parallel. Uh, there has been large parallel corpora available, for example, Europarl, uh, which is a set of transcripts for, for, from, from Europe, uh, European Parliament. Uh, or opus, which is uh, which is a collection of, of more types of parallel texts from different sources, uh, and uh, most of them contain alignment on, on the sentence level, meaning that uh, there is an English sentence uh, aligned to aligned to, uh, for example, French sentence, <coughs> and uh, they are uh, they are well known statistics measuring co-occurrence uh, significance. For example, the log dice. Uh, log dice score that is that is used used uh, in word sketches, and so uh, let's uh, unify this or let's let's use these two to get together and uh, use them to build automatic dictionary of uh, candidate translations using simply uh, the the uh, coherent significance and uh, and saying that uh, translation of one word to another is significant if the number of coherences uh, of a as translation of B is uh, is significant, and once we have uh, once we have the, this uh, dictionary automatically drafted from the data, we can uh, we can apply the, the following algorithm display displayed at, uh, or described at, at, at this slide. Um, so 
we, fir we first need to, to find the candidate translation of the head word. So we simply choose the best according to the, uh, to the score. But uh, we keep show, showing the, the other candidates for the, to, to the user in, ca in, in, case that, uh, in case that the first one simply w was wrong. And uh, then we take this translation and generate a word sketch in the other language for that. Uh, let's refer to it as uh, WS2 or word sketch 2. And for each collocate of the head word, uh, search for the translations or candidate translations in WordSketch 2. And if uh, some translations are found, then align them and show them next to each other in the, in the WordSketch. Uh, the last step is uh, finding parallel examples and kind of, uh, kind of make the information more precise. Uh, so we go through all the, the, the pairs we found in the previous step and uh, create concordance of the first pair in, uh, in the source cor corpus and the second pair had word collocate in, in the, in the uh, second corpus. And if we have uh, found nothing, then just leave the pair out because it's not a good translation obviously, else uh, we include these examples into, into the sketches. It looks like this. Uh, this is an example from a current implementation on, on, the, on the beta server uh, of the Sketch Engine service, and it's using the Europarl 5 English-French data with, uh, with, head for, with English headword declaration this uh, um, this French translation declaration was automatically find, found and, and uh, evaluated as the best translation. Here are other candidates. And uh, you can see that uh, here, is the, here is the relation modifier and written translates to ecrit, solemn translates to uh, solemnel. I quite don't understand it, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can judge yourself. And uh, the, the, the invisible text here are the examples. I have made it, made it uh, smaller for the presentation because I, I wanted to, the translation to, uh, translations to be, to be readable. <laughs> so this is for bilingual parallel. Uh, another approach is bilingual word sketchy work sketches for comparable corpora. Uh, the main difference here is that there, are, uh, there, there is no sentence alignment. Um, so we uh, cannot draft the dictionary for translating collocations automatically, uh, and we need an external, external one. Uh, we started uh, to experimenting with, with uh, Google dictionaries, but uh, it has stopped working, so we we, we couldn't uh, use it further. And uh, with uh, publishers' dictionaries, there are various, uh, say, administrative problems that we need, to, we need to search for the best, negotiate with, with, the, with, the, uh, with the other party. For every language pair, we, we need a different, uh, different um, uh, dictionary. And also, their coverage is arbitrary. We, we basically need candidate translations for all the word, all the words in the corpus that we can, that or that the, that the user can uh, input into word sketches. Uh, so our current solution is to use the uh, automatic bilingual parallel dictionaries for that, and they are working surprisingly, uh, surprisingly well. Even the dictionaries drafted from Europarl work well on on. Uh, other pairs of corpora according to the first experience. So we apply, apply completely the same procedure as, as uh, in bilingual parallel approach uh, with the only difference that we, we have no, uh, we have no, uh, no aligned, aligned examples there, so we uh, don't uh, do the check if there is, uh, if, if there is any, uh, any aligned 
pair of sentences in the corpus. And uh, we are further working on the research from obtaining uh, such dictionary information from, from purely comparable corpus, not, not only from the parallel data. So it looks like this, basically the same as bilingual parallel uh, ones, but uh, you can see that, that the words are different because the data in the corpus are different, and this is British National Corpus compared with French web corpus crawled by search sheriff. <coughs> um, I would like to mention some, some technical challenges uh, connected to BIP and BIC. Um, computing the translation candidates and drafting the dictionary is quite, uh, quite a time-consuming process uh, for, for, for 45 million um, euro parallel corpus pair, it took about, uh, or it takes about uh, 24 hours, but uh, we, don't, we don't care too much because it's a one-off task and we, we can reuse the, the, the compiled dictionary, uh, the compiled dictionary um, without recompiling. Um, another uh, bottleneck, uh, speed up, speed bottleneck is, is um, uh, evaluating the, the concordance query and picking the examples, which uh, is the most uh, difficult part of, uh, of uh, the process from the technical point of view, and it takes tens of, tens of seconds for, for all the word sketch. And we solve this, we already solved this by, uh, by introducing asynchronous loading of examples. So you get a response with the first, I don't know, two examples, and the rest is, is uh, loaded subsequently. The problem that we still have is that uh, loading dictionary with candidate translations takes a few seconds, seconds because the, the, the uh, dictionary itself is quite big. So uh, now we are working on some optimizations uh, so that the, the response from the server will be, uh, will be faster. And the last part of my presentation is BIM, bilingual manual word sketches proposed by Anna, and she will also conclude the presentation of, of uh, uh, the BIMs. Uh, it can be that there is no dictionary available for the language pair you want to use, or uh, you just simp uh, you, you, sim you simply don't, uh, don't believe in the data in the dictionary are right. So uh, you can do it yourselves, but uh, you need to specify head word in one language as, as before, but also its translation in the other language. Uh, as a result, we return something like double word sketch where we align compatible, uh, compatible relations visually. Um, one problem related to this is how to align the relations because often uh, you have uh, different relations, rela relation names meaning the same thing. Uh, so we have introduced an implementation of, of mapping to some universal format of, uh, of grammatical relation names in the word sketch. Or uh, they can have identical names. If they have identical names, they, they, can, uh, they are aligned to each other uh, automatically. Um, in the current uh, beta version of the sketch engine, it is as ad one, one of the last advanced options in, in word sketch form. So it works like uh, you input a lemma, uh, you select a target language, target corpus, and, uh, and uh, input the translation. And it will produce something like this, which uh, in a few seconds Anna will describe more in detail. Uh, I just I'll just say that that uh, there are two two aligned uh, two aligned columns with word sketch color heads. Uh, the white line the wa white ones <laughs> being uh, being related to the English word and the green ones for the for the French word. And again, this is for arbitrary pair of corpora. So we I, I have used in this example British National Corpus and French Web Corpus. Uh, 
the before the, the last thing before before I hand over to Anna is uh, reporting current stat status of, of implementation of these features in the sketch engine. Uh, all three are basically available in the beta version, so you can you can try them out. Um, like in the testing mode, we have not uh, set up them for many pairs of pairs of languages uh, because we are still testing. But if you want to, uh, or if you miss some uh, some some pair of languages, we can easily we can usually easily set up. So uh, just let us know. And uh, we have we have bilingual manual alignments only uh, so, so far only for uh, for French and English and for Portuguese in the English. So mapping from yes, uh, I I forgot to say that that. Uh, the English one is is the, the is the is the current reference grammatical names grammatical relation names. So we have the mapping for French and Portuguese, and uh, we are searching to volunteer uh, for for volunteers to to provide uh, another mappings. It's usually very simple because you you need to map few uh, at, at at most few tens of of uh, relations. So thank you very much, and I, now I would like Anna to describe. The bilingual manual output more in detail. Thank you. Um, can you take this off? Okay, I have a different set of slides here. Uh, this one. Okay, this is what a bilingual in English French uh, looks like. So you search for intelligent in English aligned with. You choose intelligent in French. This is from the English 1010 corpus. Um, and you can see here the French 1010 corpus, which um, in, has a lot greater frequency of the word intelligent than intelligent, funnily enough. And then here you can see the collocates. So you can see here chimp and chimpanzee, and you can find chimpanzee on the other side. Uh, also singe could be a possible uh, Singe uh, intelligent. Also, you see poodle and caniche and things like that. An intelligent being, uh, un être intelligent, intelligent creature, créature, and so on. Um, there's some strange things appearing, but this is not for this talk. Uh, um, but um, anyway, um, I want to talk more. Uh, Voita talked about the technical perspective. I want to go into a bit from the translation perspective. And if you take a word like the Portuguese word personagem, which translates into English uh, character, and if you get the word sketch for adjectives modifying personagem, you will see here several adjectives. And you, here, for example, ficticio could be English fictitious. Principal, personagem principal could be English principal. Feminino could be feminine. But then if you go to the English word sketch and if you look for character, you will see that ficticio is not fictitious, it's fictional. Principal is not principal, it's main, main character. And feminino, you don't say feminine character, it's a female character. So this helps a lot um, in translation to see the right collocation. Um, why manual now? Um, because um, sometimes this doesn't work. If you translate brown into Portuguese, you get marrom, uh, Brazilian Portuguese. And here are the word sketches uh, for uh, things um, that nouns that are modified by marrom. And there's really no match here at the top uh, collocates except for leather, brown leather, and couro marrom, which is the translation for leather. So it doesn't seem to be working. So you don't want that from a translation perspective. So when that happens, you go, well, how do you say brown rice in Portuguese? So what you need next is a word sketch for rice in Portuguese, arroz. And then you get that. And then you can see that you don't say brown rice in Portuguese, but you say arroz integral, which is wholemeal rice. Same thing here, another example. You don't say brown sugar in Portuguese. So you look up the collocates for sugar, açúcar, and you'll see here that you don't say, you say açúcar mascavo. 
And here, for example, you don't say brown hair in Portuguese, so you look up the translation for hair, cabelo, and you find that you say cabelo castanho, chestnut hair. So you really, it's manual, because you really have to go uh, navigating from one word sketch to another. And if you can have the two things on the same screen, it's a really helpful thing. Uh, in conclusion, these are the possibilities. BIPs, BICs, and BIMs. And thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you both. And Anna's again pulled off the beat of finishing bang on time, so that that uh, that gives us um, a good five minutes for questions. Um, someone want to kick off? Surely. Do it, yeah, Uli. Yes. Um, uh. Yeah. I'm Ulrich Hyatt from Hildesheim, Germany. Just a question about the uh, comparable corpora. I, I'm not perfectly sure about the contents of the 1010 corpus. Maybe you can just help me by telling me the corpus composition. And more generally, methodologically, the question is, if you do the big exercise, is it better to have rather large uh, monolingual corpora, so just pulling in whatever you can get, or are you looking for somehow domain or text type balance, and if yes, how do you do that? That's, that's uh, the eternal question <laughs> of building corpora. In, in I'm sorry for repeating it. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so I'll ask for, uh, I'll answer answer the first question. Uh, the Tenten family of uh, corpora are a large web crawled corpora, uh, applying uh, quite sophisticated cleaning and deduplicating methods. Uh, so it's uh, balanced in, the, in, in, in terms of uh, how uh, web itself is balanced. And I'm afraid I cannot answer the second question oh, because... But I can chip in, perhaps. <laughs> it, it depends, obviously, on, on what you want the corpus for. Corpus are, in principle, principled collection of texts. And if it's for a specific translation project in a specific domain, you would want to wo work with smaller, uh, comparable corpora. They're really comparable. I mean, texts that serve the same function and uh, corpus size that's roughly the same and all that. So, and I think you, you can make your own corpora using the sketch engine with a web book cat. So eventually it sh you should be able to get uh, 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 bilingual word sketches from your own uh, purpose made corpora in very specific domains. It should be possible. way we did the last version that, that um, we had a bash of bilingual comparable corpora um, two or three years ago um, and what we did there was uh, what we did there was domain specifics so volcanoes was our example there so we used Wikipedia for three languages to oh, we did volcanoes and Stradivarius and cancer didn't we um, so using Wikipedia as a source of seeds for a bootcat process and presented, um, presented comparable corpora based on them, or comparable word sketches based on them. The, the history of it is we did that. Wojtek showed a slide about the problems with the Google, dictionary, the Google dictionaries being unavailable. So the, 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 we did that and then realized, well, we need a solution to the dictionaries problem before we can go ahead. So we've now got a solution to the dictionaries problem, so we're now revisiting that, and I kind of agree entirely that these are on general corpora. It could well be the most, the, the, the best use of this is where people have got the specialist corpora, the, the matched specialist corpora. Any other questions? Um, can I just ask you, 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 you were saying that for developing the BIM corpora, um, you were looking for volunteers. 
you mentioned that. I mean, could you clarify what exactly what the volunteer, what you would expect the volunteers to do? Same thing that object of is the same as object de. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. oh. And okay. this this information for all the relations. Yeah. Okay. Testing. We, they're very very new, like last yeah. week. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're very okay. uh, yeah. keen yeah. to have people trying. The problem to here is that some relations in some languages map. You have. Um, in English, you have modifiers and adjectives. Yeah. And, and you know, sometimes you have a two to one match or a one to two, and, and that gets complicated. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Well, I think that, that, that again, we're, we're sort of pretty much bang on time. So that gives us the five minutes for in, uh, moving between um, lecture rooms. So just thanks again to. Um, <laughs>